Hello guys and welcome back to another mCreator tutorial. Today I will be talking about how to animate entities with mCreator for Minecraft Forge. Uh, there is a few things that you will need to do in Blockbench. So when you actually load up Blockbench, uh, there will be different options for different types of workspaces. I see a lot of people using different workspaces like generic or bedrock and these are not viable options for making a modded entity so if you're working with java you need to select the one that says modded entity that is like the only workspace that is going to work for modded entities so click on that and then you are presented with a file name and the model identifier so the model identifier and the file name need to be separate uh, or the same, but the identifier needs to be different than any other mo mobs in your actual workspace. So when you actually set this up, make sure that it's a unique name and that it will um, not have any conflict with anything. So if you were to call something cube, then you would want to make sure this is cube. But if you already have cube in like an entity called cube in your workspace then you might want to go like cube one and cube one so it's a little bit different now um animation wise you're going to need to keep in mind that you're going to need a couple of these models so sometimes you can do something like uh underscore um for example we'll just say jump and then we could keep that this would be our animation name so we can keep it separate and we might also have one called something like attack so attack and there would be another workspace like that so make sure that these are different when you're working with your different mo models now I have a couple of workspaces already set up so I'm just gonna open up those ones um, this is just a quick entity that I through together and it has not a whole lot of meshes but it gives you the idea of the bones and stuff like that so over on the left hand side after you're finished modeling your entity so to create a new cube you would just do that create a new group which is going to be your bones then you would use the folder icon right here now your meshes need to be inside a bone or your folder. In order to do that, uh, basically just drag it over into the folder and it will put it into that folder. Now your animations are going to be targeting these folders, so make sure that they're set up that way. Another thing to note is any bones inside of other existing bones are not going to be able to be animated. This is, um, down to how Mojang decided to mess that all up for the community and it's just the way that it is it's now every bone has to be kind of in its own folder under the thing if you want to animate it however you can put them inside the other bones and then select them as like different pivot points and stuff like that uh, the rotations will still work, so if you wanted to put something in here and then set the rotation for that particular thing, that will work if you select the, the bone itself and you could like move a whole bunch of things at the same time. But it's not going to be able to be animated, so it, you lose a lot of support for that kind of thing. Uh, things like that snake tutorial I was going to get to uh, won't be possible now because it used the, the folders inside of folders inside of folders and stuff like that, so... Uh, you can expect that to not probably happen unless they decide to bring it back. So, yeah, um, unfortunate. But the another thing that you'll need to do is if we go into your properties project, you'll see this particular entity is called um, Cube Jump, and that we're using it for 1.17, 1.18. So we're going to be using a 1.18 um, workspace. So depending on if your model is for a certain version, make sure that you have one of these things set up properly. For 1.16, 1.17, or pardon me, 1.16, you would probably want this one right here, um, or this one right here. I can't remember which one that you actually need it for. It might be this one, uh, but uh, for 1.18, then you want this one right here. When you import the model, it will actually say, um, what version of the workspace that you need so make sure to keep in mind which one you need for that 
Um, there's other versions here too, but currently there's only 1.16 support and 1.18 support. So that's basically that. If you keep your workspace and then you'll be able to port it if you need to. Um, so it's important when you do create your model to go ahead and click save as and then keep your project. Uh, this will ensure that you'll have something to go back to when you actually create like other things and then you don't have to worry about having to figure out how to uh, create the whole entire thing over again. So when you're making the models, make sure to save it as a project and save it as a block bench workspace. Now, the whole point of that is for the modded entity is you'll have the export Java entity and then you'll be able to export it as a .java file. So other workspaces don't have that option and are designed for different mechanics and stuff like that. So again, I've covered the folder thing. If you wanted to add different parts like arms and stuff like that, then you could basically create another group like that. And then you could create another cube and put that in, in that particular bone. Uh, one thing to note though is make sure that the bone names and the mesh names are completely different from each other as well as any mesh names don't conflict with anything else. So again, it's important to make sure that nothing uses the same name. I'm not sure if that will make too much of a difference, but um, I've always done made sure the names are separate and I haven't run into any issues, so make sure you do that. But uh, okay, so we have the jump model. It's not really going to jump, but um, there's that one. And then we have the attack one, which is basically the exact same thing, just a retextured version. And all the animation and stuff is going to be brought into M Creator. So once you have that all set up and you've exported your textures, these two textures here, and your, your actual uh, Java files for both of those entities, then you can move into uh, M Creator. All right, so when you're in M Creator, what you want to do is go to the resource folder, import your two textures for your entity. They should be under the others textures category. Uh, it says mobs, GUI, components, etc. So those things here. And then you want to go to your 3D models and texture mapping. And then you want to click import. Now you'll see right at the top here, it will basically say what... Um, particular thing that you have actually have to import it as. So again, Moj map, which is for 1.18, because we're using 1.18, we need this particular version, and we know that it's Moj map. So again, in Blockbench, it gives you those options for the different types of models and stuff like that. That's basically what this refers to right here. Now, um, it appears my GUI scale can't actually um, see the button so I'm just going to close out of that and it should open up the options. Now you want to select your Java entity files and most likely it will say to select your animations. Now because I have it scaled up for the viewing thing there will be a whole bunch of um, a button here and then you'll be able to select your different uh, folders. Now I can't actually see that because it's like scaled up and it's not going to be showing, but you'll have all these different options for the animations. Uh, constant will kind of just continue rotating around and around. Slow constant is basically just a slow version of it. There is um, constant X, which is, I'm not sure about the constant X one, slow constant X. Oh, I guess it's just um, a lowercase X. So <laughs> someone forgot to rename it the same thing up here. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, head movement animation, and then there's the leg animation. So anything that's like leg, uh, how it will move when they walk, those ones will um, animate for that. And there's different axes. So if you wanted to run it from a different axis, then you could do that and it will kind of change the direction of which way it will run as an, a leg animation. And then there's, um, legs or arm and legs. So there's those two, no animation, obviously no animation. And then there's um, your head animation. So anything that's different. So if you wanted to rotate on a different ax, uh, pitch or um, yaw axis, then you can do that as well. Um, so you have a, quite a few options to play around with. So in this case, I'm just gonna close out of that. I have the animations already set up for these two. 
one is to spin constantly and the other one is just to basically mimic a head direction if I remember correctly so I'm just gonna leave those ones I'm not gonna edit it because then I'll have to try to figure out where the folder and everything is all right so those are the two important things once you've done that you can actually um, get start working on your actual entity so you want to go to living entity create a living entity and then you should have uh, folders that you need to set up here or the files so you want to select the type of model it is now you'll see that the model cube at underscore attack now this won't actually show for anything in your um, entity so you don't have to worry about it saying model cube underscore attack so don't worry about that that model part it's just uh, the way that the Java file reads it in the thing uh, you want to set the actual name of the entity this is basically what's going to be displayed pretty much and then you have the cube attack so this is our texture file you can set all the other settings the way that you want but these uh, three things are basically required for setting everything up uh, everything on this other page can be configured however you like now depending on how you want to set up your entity uh, this one will actually attack a player when it's in this particular mode so you might want to change some of the properties like the behavior um, creatures are more passive they won't get attacked by um, iron golems or things like that mobs will get attacked by iron golems and they're generally more hostile towards other things uh, it's more designed for aggressive creatures but you can get them to charge at other entities if they're in passive but I don't know if they do damage so you can choose between the, the versions for that uh, then you can set the properties and stuff down here it doesn't really matter too much uh, one thing to note though uh, you want to make sure the health is the same as all your different block your entity states now the reason for that is we will be copying over the health and we need to make sure that it's the same health uh, when the uh, same health range when we're actually copying it so make sure that if you get set this one one of your states to 10 then you want to make sure that all your other states are 10 as well um, outside of that I think the other settings can be pretty much configured however you want uh, there's no big issue for that uh, the other thing particles you can set this however you want uh, inventory doesn't have one don't you need it but you can add it if you want um, when struck by lightning now there's only one procedure that we're actually running from this is uh, on entity tick update so this will I'll cover this in a second but um, just remember that we'll need this for both of our entities or all our entities when we actually set up the, the uh, states and stuff like that AI goals um, I just use the template for uh, a mob aggressive towards player so this one right here and basically what this does is just um, melee do melee at contact attack so basically when it goes and attacks the uh, goes up against something it will attack with a speed of um, 1.2 I don't really know what that means but a little bit faster than the default speed chase after sight is disabled you can set conditions if you want fight attacker mobs back call for help so I haven't set the call for help but it will fight attacker mobs uh, which isn't really too important at the moment but um, it makes sense in a little bit uh, wander around so it'll kind of wander around uh, just kind of like regular entities and stuff like that look around so it'll kind of look around and then attack only in sight and only nearby are both disabled but we're selecting the player entity so basically it'll be hostile to a player within a certain range so this is just the ai for that um we're, we'll be setting up uh basically conditions to switch over the models and stuff like that for the entities and then spawning this particular one doesn't have any spawning uh, properties the reason why because we're using it as a secondary entity that will basically go ahead and uh, call in when we need to switch it over so once you've done that save that and then you need to create your other one you can just basically duplicate that and then give it a name and set, then select OK and it should um, basically import properly so once you have that set up then you want to change your model uh, for your thing now I have this one set to jump and the cube set to jump 
and all the other properties are basically the exact same thing. The only difference is it's using a different trigger. Um, now I'll cover the triggers now. So this trigger is basically going to run on server side. So basically when it's saying not is provided on remote uh, world remote client side. Basically what that will do is if it's like this, it will run on client side. If it's like this, it will run on server side, right? So after that, what we're doing is we're testing if there is a entity um, in the radius of 16, blo 16 with a cube size, cube size of 16 is a player. So basically we're targeting the entity's position. Now, if there is one, then we're going to save a whole bunch of variables to local variables. As you can see, we have yaw, pitch, uh, positions for the X, Y, and Z, velocity for the X, Y, and Z, health, and oxygen. So all these things are basically copied over. And then what we're doing is we're going to basically spawn in our attacker mob uh, using the summon command that can be found under here. And then it's basically spawn at and then the location and then type of living entity. You want to make sure that you set your uh, actual model for that one. Now this one will be a little bit different when we're actually animating it. So again, uh, it'll be kind of like spinning around where the other one will be just kind of wandering around like a regular entity. And then what we want to do is we want to test again for our cube entity. And then we're going to basically go ahead, set the rotation, and we're going to be testing for the entity again of the cube attacked entity where that's the entity that we're targeting and then we're going to be setting the yaw and pitch and then below that what we're doing is we're using movement vector to basically select the entity again and then we're setting the velocity for each one of those so it keeps the velocity movement and then lastly uh, the last two things we're just setting make sure that we set that same health of the current health and then we're also making sure that we set the oxygen if it's underwater or something like that we want to make sure that it keeps the oxygen as well finally we're just despawning the current entity and that's fine we don't need it anymore we have the other one with all the same properties so we can finally despawn the one that we the jump jump um cube for basically uh we don't need that one it'll just be spawning in the attack one so we don't need that one all right so that's basically that one and then in short what it's doing copying the permissions spawning in the entity it will set the variables for that particular spawned in entity and then it's despawning the current entity running the script so in short that's what it's doing and again it's only doing that if the player is 16 um 16 blocks or whatever within radius of the actual entity that's going to be running the procedure so and it's on server side the other thing that we have is ai goals this one's a little bit different this one's more for a passive mob it's going to wander around look around float in water and leap at target with speed factor 0 0.5 and then spawning we do have this one to spawn we have set the uh, biomes that it will spawn in and it will be spawning as a creature type so it'll spawn on the surface uh, you can set this to monster or anything like that but it's just easier for the tutorial to kind of show if it's in on the surface when it's spawning and it's in the metal meadow or plains biome meadow is a 1.8 biome so um, don't expect it to be on previous versions and that's all i've basically done here so that's that one now the other procedure for the uh, attacker pretty much the same thing uh, we're just testing if the player is not so this is the not block we're basically testing if it's not 16 blocks in radius so basically the opposite of the direct, the condition of that we had in the last procedure and then we're just basically saving all the procedures again going to spawn the jump version and then we're targeting the jump version for all the uh, targeting blocks for the nearest entity and we're doing the exact same thing that we did before. We're just carrying over the health. We're carrying over the velocity, the oxygen position, and the rotation as well. So that's what's all going down here. And then we're just despawning the entity again. So make sure to provide this procedure in the uh, 
like on a workspace and download so you guys can actually use it and stuff like that easy to set up it's all pre-configured you just need to set your entity uh, up here and then those particular blocks for your second entity and you should be good to go um, now again if you wanted to create it from scratch all these blocks here are found under entity data you have to scroll through it and find them all but that's basically that you'll want to set variables for each one of them and the spawn entity is found under world management it's found right here and then these these blocks here, these ones and those ones here are found under world data. You can find them right at the bottom of the list right here. And your general if statements, you can generally find despawn entity is found under entity management, despawn entity right here. And the server side is found under world data. Scroll down to the bottom and then it's this one right here that says client side. So you wanna make sure that you have that one. And the not block is found right under here. So that will basically just test if it's not in a certain location. So that's basically all those components that you really need for that to actually get working. So if you need to find them, those are the folders that they're under. So again, that's that part. Now let's actually see it in action and I'll just quickly cover how it works in survival mode and hopefully not die. All right, so there is one of them right in front of me. I'm going to get close to it and it's going to change. And as you can see, it will kind of change in the direction that it's um, facing. If we kind of try to outrun it, um, it will go back to its regular state. So you can see that it has those different eyes there. So basically you can set different conditions and then set the animations. Now, if we get close to it again, you'll well, it should be actually spinning. It was yesterday, but it's not today. I'm not sure why. Sometimes the animations are a little bit wonky, but basically what should happen is it should spin. Uh, I'll see if I can't find another one. It might have been just that one that loaded in that was a little bit wonky. But um, I noticed some of the animations actually don't work some of the times. I'm not sure why that is. But um, I haven't been able to pinpoint the cause of it, just that they decide not to work. So I'm wondering if that might be the same issue. I've tried to get the developer's attention about it, but I'm not sure if they'll fix it. Okay, there's one right over there. Well, we're low on food, so we'll have to kind of walk over there. See if he starts spinning. I'm probably smart to kind of swim across this side. It's going up the hill, so. Because I had that one loaded in yesterday, so let's see if this one spins a little bit. Okay, this one's not spinning either. Okay, let, let me just try the uh, settings again, and we'll see if we can't get that working. I'm not sure if... Um, it's because I reloaded the workspace or if I did something, but I didn't open up the procedure. So that would be the, um, that's the jump one, that one. So set animations and then we want the constant spinning. Why set animations it should compile it. Then we'll quickly try, um, try it again. Because it should have been already configured before, so I'm not sure why it would have reset. But I did restart the workspace from yesterday, so it might have something to do with that. Maybe it just didn't save properly or something like that after I closed it. That's always a possibility. Yeah, I'll just uh, hop in game and then I'll show you guys. Uh, we'll narrow down another one. Okay, so let's see if we can't find another one. Uh, sometimes they spawn in groups, so it's quite possible there might be another one around here somewhere. Uh, looks like there's one right across there, actually, so we can probably swim across. I ended up getting some cooked beef so we could easily... Um, 
get around places a little bit faster. So hopefully now that this is set up. Yeah, see, he's spinning now. So I'm not sure why he didn't spin before. I think it has something to do with me closing out the workspace because he was spinning yesterday. But um, if we get away from him, he's just going to kind of just be spinning over there. So as you can see... He stops spinning and then he's just acting like a regular head animation. He'll just kind of focus around, looking around and stuff like that. But as soon as we get closer, he starts spinning again. So you can basically set up the animations like that as you wish. So there's a few of them, but um, you'll be able to basically animate it with those particular options. Uh, sadly, custom animations aren't a thing yet. So hopefully one day in the future that, that will be, but um, I'm not sure when that will ever happen <laughs> there's a lot of things that a lot of people want and it hasn't happened yet so but yeah it's just an interesting to see how it all works and stuff like that so again if we hit him and then we kind of escape he'll have the same health as the other entity so um we can go back and it should only take like one hit so it's basically that when it comes down to it because it saves all the health and stuff over to the entity so we basically can um keep the health oxygen values the uh motion and rotation and stuff like that. oh a sunken ship um yeah so that's basically it uh if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out